Hi, Ian. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm very good, sir. Well, I'm very, very excited about this fireside chat. Futurist always has such a great lineup, and I was peeking into your uh, LinkedIn profile a little bit and saw that you've been in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, and quite a few others, so you must have quite a background. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about what you're focused on before crypto? Yes. So prior to crypto, I was working at IBM. Uh, I was there for four years working on IBM Watson Analytics, helping non-technical people leverage artificial intelligence to just make better business uh, uh, activity, right? From two-point sales, marketing, finance, helping people really leverage the power of AI in their daily business activities. And I loved it, right? So I loved work, 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 working with data, with analytics, and it was my passion. And when I was able to bring that over to crypto, I was in heaven. Awesome. So what brought you into crypto? So a friend of mine got me into crypto because IBM was heavily uh, invested in blockchain. So I was helping him, helping him really understand blockchain at, at IBM. And he taught me Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And as somebody who was already investing in the stock market, when I learned that you could invest in crypto and Bitcoin, and the more I learned about it, the more I just saw this as the future of money. For sure. Yeah, it took me a little while. <laughs> But uh, it definitely makes sense when you just wrap around your mind, you know, what is money to begin with. Uh, so you're obviously focused on token metrics and, and you have another venture as well. Uh, but let's talk about token metrics first. So what's the platform? How did it go from being a dream to reality? Yes. So token metrics is an AI driven cryptocurrency research company. So we use artificial intelligence to build crypto indices, rankings and price predictions. And this was born from my famous ICO spreadsheet back in 2017, 2018. I basically had an open source spreadsheet where I would log my trades and my investments in crypto using a data-driven approach I called Tokenmetrics. Um, and basically people saw me uh, essentially turn my crypto portfolio at that time of about $20,000 into over 5 million, fully wow. transparent through my spreadsheet because every trade was logged there. And at the peak of the last bull run in 2018, this open source spreadsheet was getting over 1 million unique visitors a month. And that to me showed, showed me that there was a need in crypto for people to effectively invest using a data-driven approach, uh, basically through token metrics. And having worked at IBM with Watson, I knew that AI was the future. So I wanted to take that spreadsheet and turn that into something more powerful by creating an application that would, would also leverage AI to invest in crypto. And that's where token metrics was born. So we launched last year on Black Friday. So this, this month is actually our one year anniversary. And now we have more than 1,600 paying customers worldwide. Uh, two thirds of our customers are actually outside the U.S. And uh, it's been it's been great growing the platform and really helping people invest in crypto using AI. That's that's awesome. And and obviously it's because of your data driven approach. As they say, the numbers never lie. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know why we don't pay more attention to them. But um, let's talk about the different types of tokens out there. I know there's a lot of beginners tuning in. Uh, just like last year, they had an amazing boot camp. So uh, knowing that, let's let's go back to first grade. Uh, what are some of the major categories of tokens out there? So you have currencies or payments, cryptocurrencies that are used for transactional payments, such as Bitcoin, uh, even private, uh, even Dash. Or then you also have privacy coins. Cryptocurrency is used for privacy to have private transactions, such as Monero. Then you also have stable coins. These are cryptocurrencies pegged to an asset such as the US dollar, the euro, the yen, obviously, or, or even gold. Then you also have uh, DeFi, DeFi, uh, or rather utility tokens or governance tokens. But these are cryptocurrencies or tokens that are used inside an ecosystem on a platform. Gotcha. So which one do you like talking about the most? Oh, I like talking about utility tokens because these are platforms creating their own economies. And this year, the biggest trend has been DeFi, and most of those are utility tokens. These are platforms that are building their own economies and really showing the value that can be uh, had through cryptocurrencies. Understood. So I'm guessing you have metrics, token metrics in your name. <laughs> uh, so it's not just about getting a whole bunch of data and uh, getting more data. You, you have to manage it. You have to draw conclusions. So let's go back to you know, what types of data are, are you collecting for your metrics? So currently we collect more than 130 different data points on data. We have both quantitative and qualitative data points. So quantitative data points such as 
obviously the pricing, the, the actual performance and returns. So we take 54 different quant metrics. These are data points such as sharp ratio, Sotino ratio, max drawdown, the returns, uh, skew to kind of get technical. Then we also have our team that goes through and does in-depth code reviews on actual projects and also fundamental analysis. So looking into the, the backgrounds of, of the team members, their marketing, their reputation, their press, uh, going through the actual code and reading the code based on different metrics developers use and taking all these, all these different data points and then creating one single holistic grade that will tell, tell you in real time how bullish or bearish we are on that cryptocurrency. Gotcha. And then obviously putting your money somewhere is, um, you know, a strong vote of confidence and can come with a lot of consequences if you pick the wrong thing. So I'm guessing as you've compiled all these different metrics and learned which ones are more important than others, um, you probably have somewhat of a hit list or at least one thing that is a total no go. I'm curious, you know, is there any particular metric that would be an instant no from you when it comes to investing? Yes. So the first one is actually pretty straightforward, liquidity. So the daily trading volume. So a project can be great, but if you can't get in or get out quickly, it makes it very tough to invest or trade in a cryptocurrency. So I would say daily trading volume and liquidity. In general, we like to use, uh, we like to take the daily trading volume and divide it by the market cap. And we like it to be greater than 10%, meaning that it's a pretty liquid coin, meaning that you can trade about 10% of the market cap is trading every single day or higher. Um, the other one would also be projects that have very large insider discounts or early investor discounts, meaning that let's say a project sold to investors early on for a penny, but is now listing or selling publicly to investors at 10 cents, basically at a 10x price. That means that there would be a very large incentive for the early investors to sell or, 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 or basically dump on the public, right? So projects like that typically are, are basically knows for me early on. So I was also seeing in your LinkedIn, you have 100x advisors. I thought if we had time, we'll just talk a little bit about that too. And it looks like we got seven minutes left. So <laughs> when did that get started? Yeah, so 100x is basically our blockchain crypto investment company, right? So it's basically me and my business partners. Uh, after I quit my job at IBM to go full time into crypto as an investor, I wanted to really kind of have a firm to invest in, but also provide consulting work to companies because we went on a crypto world tour. We did. 35 countries in 2018 in 12 months, hosting events as large as a thousand people in Moscow, Russia, in London, even went to emerging markets like in Africa, where I'm from in Uganda, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, South America, Asia. And it was just great. And one of the cool things about it was we made 15 investments in 15 different countries. So we really got to see how different people around the world were building and trying to make crypto and the blockchain space a lot better. So that was me kind of working with my business partners, trying to put something together to try to travel around the world and find people doing great things and invest in them. That's wonderful. Well, I've always wanted to get more international exposure and uh, never made it beyond Canada and Mexico until last year. Uh, we actually went through Europe, five different countries, starting in London, uh, never drew, drove in a, a Range Rover before, um, and especially on those skinny streets. <laughs> it, was, it was difficult, especially once we got to Monaco. But you know, just seeing the different countries, meeting people along the way, it was definitely a blast. Um, but that just showed me how different, uh, not just what the opportunities are out there, but how they're viewed. Um, you know, Americans are, are quite different. I, I didn't realize how different we were. It's kind of like when you have an accent and don't know it because everybody around you has it. Um, but when you're looking at these different countries, and I guess I'll just start with the United States, um, what are you looking at in terms of maybe regulation or opportunity or like when you have literally the whole world and crypto makes that so easy, uh, there are no barriers, how do you choose? Yes, I mean, it's definitely a very challenging uh, time we're in, especially in the US. Uh, while the US has, I would, I would think in my, in my opinion, probably the best development or it's up there in terms of development and the level of activity when it comes around the crypto space. But in terms of regulation, uh, most of the crypto companies in the US have had to go offshore because there's hasn't really, there ha hasn't been much clarity or guidance in terms of regulation from the SEC, from the CFTC. So lots of lo lots of blockchain entrepreneurs are going offshore, whether it's to Singapore, Switzerland and creating companies there. And that was one of the challenges I came across during my travels 
lots of Americans were saying that they would love to be home and build, but because of the lack of clarity around cryptocurrencies not being securities or DeFi or just anything else in, in terms of just crypto regulation and, and compliance, it's been very, very challenging. Uh, but with that being said, though, from traveling around the world, uh, I, crypto is probably one of the technologies out there that's truly global, global from day one, because you can go anywhere in the world and people get crypto, right? Because money is one of the biggest challenges globally. And for crypto to disrupt money and make it global, where people can now become fully unbanked. For example, when I was in Lagos, Nigeria, uh, I met people who told me they love Bitcoin because now they, they can become a part of the global economy. So for example, one merchant told me that he wanted to hire developers overseas, uh, but it was very cumbersome for him to pay him in the local currency, the Naira, because of just the, the issues Nigeria has had with online payments. It makes it very challenging for honest people to make a living online because sending money, so sending their own local currency is almost impossible. So they have to get dollars and getting dollars is very ch challenging in Nigeria. But now because of Bitcoin, they can pay contractors in Bitcoin. They can become a part of the global economy through Bitcoin or even through stable coins and crypto. So to me, that's been one of the biggest, I would say, uh, value adds of crypto. Crypto is truly global and it's helping everybody around the world become part of the global economy. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, most of us tuning in don't really understand how huge that is. Um, one of the things, that, and I'm a weekly guest at the Wild West Crypto Show, so we, we talk about some of these uh, real life challenges. And you know, if you're in Africa and you don't have a bank account, I mean, you, just think about it. You don't have any social security number. You know, the list goes on. You know, you basically don't exist. And if you wanted to just do something as simple as store up wealth, and you know, we need be able to do that in order to have the drive to build something bigger than just today, uh, but you know, into the future or to you know, level up. If all you can do is really work for your day and only hide or store you know, only enough value to get through because you can't trust your neighbors, you know, we can go on and on about this, but just having a bank account or a crypto wallet in this case can just be a total game changer in what someone can do in their lives. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I feel like crypto is true economic empowerment. That's actually one of our company visions because while crypto for me has helped me make money, going on the crypto world tour really showed me crypto was about empowering people to just take control of building their own wealth and making money, right? Because people are, are no longer, people don't, don't have to be tied down to currencies in their local jurisdiction. They can now become part of the global economy and become their own bank. And that's the beauty of crypto. Absolutely. And, you know, as we were discussing, just having access to the whole world, you know, if your neighborhood doesn't need the services that you provide and there's no way of, of getting outside of that bubble or that border that you're restricted in, um, it, it'll definitely be interesting to see how these economies develop. And, and I think, you know, as I'm guessing those that are tuning into the session are, are really interested in investing in tokens. And of course, there's security tokens out there. And, and I think you know, once we have that global stock market uh, really established, well trusted, and you know, the right regulations and clarity and, and different jurisdictions like the United States, I mean, just imagine how fast Africa, for instance, can develop if they can skip the telephone stage, go directly to towers and skip you know, doing the, the coaxial cables for, you know, basic internet and go straight to fiber or even yeah. just towers. Um, so <laughs> it, yeah, it's, so it's definitely going to be nuts. Yeah, I mean, I would say that's why we're so excited to be in the crypto space and even to work on token metrics, because we believe this is the biggest problem in all of crypto. Because we think once crypto blows up and gets huge, because by estimates, for example, the World Economic Forum believes by 2027, 10% of the world's GDP will be tokenized. So that adds up to about nine to $10 trillion. So from the current market cap where crypto is now, that's basically about a 40X growth in market cap and value in crypto. And when this, when, when people, when brand new people get, get into crypto, even people who've been in crypto for a while, the biggest challenge they have is how to efficiently allocate capital in crypto. And one, one stat people don't really talk about is most people who get into crypto quit. For example, eToro mentioned recently that 80% of traders lose money and quit within two years. And that becomes a very big challenge. 
to a point where that we think to keep people longer in crypto, they have to efficiently invest money and not lose money. And we think using AI helps with that. No doubt. So just in wrapping up, what's your futurist prediction by August 2021 when we'll be back in Toronto, Canada, as we are every year for the Futurist Conference? Yeah, so my big prediction is I think there'll be a big company in the space that launches their own cryptocurrency that enters a top 20 market cap, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Reddit, but I think there'll be a big company that kind of has that big crypto moment that really takes crypto main mainstream. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I definitely look forward to talking more off the air. Um, can't wait to see who's next. <laughs>